Far above the fields and the running river beds Just take a breath and feel it flowing through your head This is God's country It's heaven's narrow I want to spend my day Right here. Narrow winding trails lead to higher ground. Snow capped giants echo your every sound. This is God's country. It's heaven. I want to spend my days right here I see the sunlight every morning The stars smile on us every night Winds keep changing Without warning This is the beauty Of our lives Arrow winding trail Lead to higher ground No cap giants echo This is God's country It's heaven's mirror I want to spend my days right here This is God's country It's heaven's world I want to spend my days right here Grizzly Adams. He was the greatest mountain man of them all. A tough, rugged man who got his nickname from the grizzly bears that he trapped and tamed. His daring exploits put him right up there with Daniel Boone and Wild Bill Hickok. His story was told in newspapers throughout America. And Samson, one of his favorite bears, ended up on the California state flag. His real name was John Adams. He was born in Massachusetts in 1812 part of the same family that gave us President Adams. And would you believe that Grizzly Adams, America's bravest and most famous mountain man, was a shoemaker until he fled from New England in 1849. He had always had a hankering to prove himself and be alone. So he escaped from the strict city life of New England and headed west. His trail took him down the Mississippi, into the desert, 
and eventually to California, where he found what he was looking for. Tall mountains, abundant game, and Indians who would respect his way of life as much as he would respect theirs. All he wanted was to be left alone. Oh, he'd have a traveling companion now and then while he roamed the Sierra Nevada, the Humboldt Range, and the Rockies, but for the most part, he traveled by himself. He'd only come down to civilization when he needed more ammunition and food supplies, but for the most part, he was darn near self-sufficient. He trapped his own food, dried his own jerky, made his own clothes, and entertained himself by capturing and training animals to keep him company. Eventually, his collection included trained grizzly bears, cubs, wolves, elks, pumas, and a whole bunch of little critters. Why, he had so many that he took the whole lot of them to San Francisco and set up one of the first zoos in the West for the public to come visit. His fame as a hunter, trapper, and animal trainer brought him to the attention of one P.T. Barnum, who later took Grizzly Adams to New York with his California menagerie. Old Grizzly Adams rode down Broadway on the back of his favorite bear, followed by all his other little animal friends. What a sight that must have been. No one who ever saw him forgot the man who tamed the dangerous grizzly bears, a man called Grizzly Adams, a man whose legend lives on. I'm going to have to leave you for a while, big fella. You be a good boy. I'll be back as soon as I can. Grizzly Adams knew his old friend Trapper must have had some important news for him. So he grabbed his pack and bedroll and began his journey down the mountain, stopping to say goodbye to some of his small animal friends. Friends like Clyde the Skunk, a real lovable little character who scared most people away, but loved to be scratched by Grizzly Adams. Yep, it was always real hard for Grizzly Adams to say goodbye to his animal friends because he had raised most of them and they were his only real family. Another friend was a little yearling who he named Elsie. Last winter he had found her trapped in a snowbank, brought her back to his cabin and mended a broken leg. Grizzly Adams was the only mountain man known to capture and make friends with grizzly bears. Grizzly Adams also made friends with the ferocious badger, known to be one of the honoriest little critters in the mountains, pound for pound. As Adams got down to the bottom of the mountain, he knew that one of his critter friends had been following him. Oh, he hadn't seen him yet, but he knew that Snowball the raccoon was right behind him, waiting to sneak a free meal. Adams, watching, took his canteen, went down to the creek to fill it. Oh, he could hear Snowball sneaking up. So Adams played his game, left that pack wide open while he went to fill that canteen, and sure enough, old Snowball came sneaking up with his mask on and got into Grizzly's pack. They both really enjoyed this game. You see, it was a game they'd played a hundred times, but it always made old Grizz laugh. Snowball saw Grizzly's best friend, Martha. He knew that Grizzly Adams was leaving for a spell. Come on, Martha. Let's go find Trapper.
Hello, Gris. Hey, Trapper. How are you doing? All right, good to see you. What brings you to this side of the mountain? Oh, you mostly. Your friend, Mr. Carlos, wants you to come on down to his camp. He's got an important message for you. Besides, don't call me Trapper no more. What happened? You step into one of your own traps? No, not that at all. Why the change of name after all these years? Now I go by the name of two cabins, because I done built me one cabin up in the high country for summer and one down in the valley for winter. So one cabin and one cabin is two cabins. Simple. So I'm not trapper anymore. But I wonder why Carlos sent you all the way out here looking for me. Well, he's got a letter for you. Is he still up at Four Peaks? No, nope. moved his camp down there at the old mission by the Santa Cruz River just north of Tucson. Said it was safer there. I'm heading for Tucson, gonna stop at the mission on the way. Maybe we could travel together. I'd like that. Besides, Martha's tired of hearing my stories. Ah, uh, come on, Martha, let's head out. I'll give you a fine cup of coffee by the campfire tonight. Yes, sir. Grizzly and Trapper made their way south over the mountains, down through the winding trails to the Santa Cruz mission. There they were to meet their old friend, Don Carlos. Yes, sir, Martha got mighty hot on the trip. Little did they know that they was arriving right in the middle of the big fiesta. Senor Adams, I am so glad Trapper found you. You have not come to our village in a long time. I am glad you come now during fiesta. I'm always glad to visit my good friend Carlos. <laughs> I do not know this bear. What happened to Big Red? He's up in the mountains. He's not too crazy about this heat. Ah. Uh. This is Martha. She won't give you any trouble. Martha's a friend to all that are friends to her. Hello, Senorita Martha. Friend, huh? Hey, good friend. <laughs> you have a letter for me, Carlos? See, si. my niece has it. Maria, Senor Adams is here. Bring me his letter. Thank you, Maria. I'm very happy to meet you. I'm happy to meet you, Mr. Adams. My uncle has spoken of you so often. Oh, this is Martha. But your uncle did not speak of what a lovely niece he has. I've wanted to meet you for so very long. I wanted to say gracias, senor. Thank you for saving my uncle's life. But your uncle has saved my life many a times. I'm very happy to help. You know, Mr. Adams, I was away in Santa Fe at the mission school when they shot my uncle in the back. But I have sworn to find this man and kill him. My niece was educated in the mission school. Didn't the good padres teach you there? Do not kill. It is a command from God. The padres say, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I was not shot in the eye. I was not shot in the tooth. I was shot in the back. Then I shoot him in the back. This letter's from Mr. Carson. Wh who is this, uh, Senor Carson? He's a banker from back east. He was on a wagon train crossing the Lower Plains. 
Trapper and I came along when he got into trouble, big trouble. Oh, por favor. Please, come sit. Tell us about this big trouble. Come. Oh. I, uh, it might be relative. I don't want Martha to be <laughs> mad at me, huh? Oh, sit, sit. Now, this big trouble. What is it? We were walking Grizzly along. Adams began telling the story of how he and Trapper, along with Martha, had come up on Mr. Carson, a lady named Miss Hanson, and a group of children trying to get through the Utah Mountain Territory. Grizzly and Trapper had saved them from the Indians and then offered to help them over the mountains and down into the valley, where they were supposed to meet Mr. Hanson who had gone ahead to buy wagons and supplies needed for their trip to Tucson, their new home in the Arizona Territory. He's there, Mr. Carson. That's one sour individual. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Oh, you're welcome. Oh. I've never seen anything like it in my life. You know, if they hadn't shown up when they did, we'd be dead or worse. Oh, child, our new friends will get us there all right. A real tough climb over the mountain, so when they stopped to make camp, the children had earned a little fun. Why, Martha was so hungry that she even helped get the firewood to cook supper while Grizzly and Trapper made camp. Old Martha just kept sniffing around and was the first one to eat. Because when a grizzly bear thinks it's time to eat, it's time to eat. So with a sugar treat from Grizz, Martha enjoyed her favorite time of day. I'm riding up a bear! She was so happy, she even gave Esther a ride down to the creek, where they watched a mother bear and her cubs take their afternoon bath. Yes, sir, it was a real treat for a little girl from back east. <laughs> Are you having fun here? Yeah! <laughs> Where's your plate? I haven't seen you take a bite. I haven't much of an appetite, thank you. You won't have any strength if you don't eat. She's right, Mr. Carson. That's funny. What? My, my plate. I could swear it was right here a moment ago. We thought you had forgotten about us. Is he a friend of yours, too? Snowball? This is Jonathan and Esther. Hi, Hi Snowball. Snowball. He's just an orphan of the wilderness that nobody cares about. <laughs> I like you, Shady Bridget. <laughs> you children look like you're ready for bed. Come on, Scoot. But Mr. Adams is going to tell us another story. We'll save it. And I'll make sure that Martha tucks you in. Martha, make sure they say their prayers now. Now. 
Now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. God bless Papa and Amanda, Mr. Two Cabins, Mrs. Hanson, Mr. Adams, Martha, and Snowball. Amen. <clears throat> And God bless Uncle Horace. Amen. That's quite a niece and nephew you have there, Mr. Carson. Yes, they've been through quite a lot with their mother dying. It hasn't been easy. It's getting late. We better all turn in. I'll spell you in a couple hours, Adams. Mr. Two Cabins? I'm gonna take my turn at watch in two hours. Mr. Two Cabins, I... Shut up, Warren. I feed you to that bear. Hey, Mr. Hanson. Next morning, Grizzly and Trapper took the folks down the mountain, where Mr. Hanson and the wagons were waiting. After pointing them on their way, Grizz and Trapper headed over the mountain so they could get to the fort ahead of the wagons. And Mr. Carson had never driven a wagon before and seemed to find every gopher hole in the valley. You blasted mules! For the love of God! He's gone and done it again. Well, you can bet it won't be the last time. John. children get off them wagons. I'm gonna hide you in the rocks. <laughs> if there's any shooting, wait till it's over. Then take the trail back to Fort Wayne. You and the children stay here. Young man, I'm counting on you. Yes, sir. I'll come for you when it's all over.
Listen, listen. Sounds like trouble. Sure sounds that way. Let's go. Don't let him kill me. Hey, you're Don't safe. Me. You're safe now. Kind of. Them Indians is gone. You're going to be all right. Was it only you and the other driver in the wagon? Is he all right? I'm sorry. Your friend is dead. Taking an error in the heart is over quick. We met Mrs. Hansen and the children outside Fort Wayne. They made it there safely. They told us about the attack. They killed Jack. They took our horses. What good will Heine's horses do those thieving Indians? They can't ride them. They eat them. Will they be back? Not for a spell. What am I going to do? I can't walk to Tucson. You can and you will. Or you can wait around here for them engines to come back and finish what they started. Oh, they'd like that, they would. It's miles to Tucson. You got that right, but we'll just go up over that mountain. It's all downhill till we get into the desert country. You mean walk over that mountain? Yeah, you get tired of walking. You can run for a while. I'm tired here. Like I said, let's get going. Just <coughs> beat him up. You're going to be OK now. Yeah. There you go. Carson, take it easy. from me. Hold on now. Martha ain't gonna hurt nobody. Leave the man alone. He done been through enough for one day. You do what Adams tells you and we might just get you out of here with your scalp. If you can do that, Mr. Grizzly, and Mr. Adams, I'd sure appreciate it. Well, let's get moving before we have more company. And that might be just about a minute. Nothing but blood in here. The Apache sure did the job. They done it too well. That gold's gone. They didn't notice any gold in this wagon. Well, let me tell you, they they must have found it because it's gone. That pipsqueak banker's trying to walk out of here carrying that gold. Look around here for some tracks, trail, anything. you tried to back shoot when it ran you out of his territory yeah uh, it's something like that yeah. yeah all right it's adams that banker and another fellow trying to walk out of here carrying their gold what do we do now we follow them their trail will be easy to follow as a river let's go <laughs> Oh, 
something, Adams? Something's been bothering me ever since we left them wagons. What was that? Well, a couple of things, actually. First off, ain't no engine worth a plug it ride out there and leave that fine harness leather. Maybe they didn't have time to. Well, every print around there was wearing a shoe. Every print was shod. So? Well, seems more like some hellions dressed up as Indians ride down in there, scared them folks off so they could steal their horses. Sounds like Bodine to me. You know this Bodine fella? We've crossed trails before. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna go on ahead and set us up a nice camp for tonight so we can get some rest. Mr. Carson? Well, wouldn't we do better keeping on the move? Not really, Mr. Carson. There are many bleached bones along these trails. Bones of those who didn't know how to conserve their strength and ration their food and water. I've heard the Indians won't attack at night. Is that true? That's true. <laughs> Afraid their spirits won't be able to find the happy hunting ground after dark, right? Wrong. They didn't want their horses stepping in a gopher hole and breaking a leg. If I said it once, I said it a dozen times, I'm gonna say it again. They couldn't have come this way. If they'd have come this way, we'd have seen some science by now. We ain't seen nothing. Now, if you ask me... I ain't asking you. Ooh. I feel like it's time I give y'all a little lesson in tracking. When you're in the thick underbrush like this, you gotta look for signs, have eyes like an eagle. Look for footprints, broken twigs, things like that. That's how you track somebody in the woods. Now, look at here. See there? A horse must have come right by here, or a bear, one or the other. Hmm. Now, I think they've gone down to the river bottom because they run out of water. So what? Well, so they double back, go up over the mountains there, take the shortcut to Tucson. Them horses ain't ever going to make it over them mountains. Well. That's why we're going to take them down to the river. Come on. Go. <laughs> they fall for that every time. Uh, anybody that drink your coffee could eat boiled owl. <laughs> you just say that make me feel good, Grizz. I'll go down to the river and get some more water for your coffee. Don't get lost. You see, he ain't carrying no pack. You kill him now, we won't ever get the gold. Oh, but look how close we was. We've never been this close that much gold. Because of your <laughs> itchy trigger finger, they know we're here. Huh. Now we gotta ease in to get the drop on them. So, follow me and be quiet. Yeah. Bodine, I'll circle around. Right don't be quiet. I said, I said, be quiet. Adams. Mr. Carson, what's the matter? So, somebody tried to kill me. That bullet went right over my head. Back on the trail, I heard the one they called Bodine talking to his men. He's got some crazy idea you carrying gold in that backpack of yours. Are you? 
Yes, it is gold. A lot of gold. This is a shipment my bank is sending to our new bank in Tucson. We put a dummy shipment on the Wells Fargo stage. All kinds of guards traveling with it. I never thought anyone would suspect that I'd hidden it in our wagon. I'm really sorry. I thought so. That backpack of yours did seem a mite heavy to just be dirty socks. Bodine's come this close. He's not going to give up yet. Bodine, I recognize your style. Still sending others to do your dirty work. You're still a dry gulcher. I don't want you, Adam. Just send that banker and his pack down here to us. Rest of you can walk out of here safe. Ain't no need for any bloodshed. Just turn that banker over to us now. You know I can't do that. Well, I'm gonna have to kill you then, Adam. You'll try. You're a fool. We got you number two to one. Sounds like you got good odds to me. I swear I'm gonna kill you, Adams. And that banker and his gold is gonna be easy pickings. The rest of them folks with you, they're gonna die right here on this mountain. You don't want that, do you? What about it, Adams? I'm waiting. Okay, Bodine, I'm calling your hand. You what? I know you never ride lonesome. Show your guns. I won't fire on them. Just let me see what you have to back your play. Jake! Hey, Jake, fire off around. Reno! 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 That's not like you, Bodine, to risk your life on a bluff, but you never could stand without a higher gun. Sure is in some kind of hurry to get down off this mountain. <laughs> you think we've seen the last of him? Oh, uh, he'll be back, but not for a while. Bodine's the most stubborn man I've ever met. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mr. Adams? While Mr. Trapper was getting their guns, Martha and I did a little uh, horse thieving. She scared the other one off. I still say we ought to be taking turns riding. Well, you two weren't so dumb. You still have your horses under you. Well, cowboys ain't made for walking. The legs ain't made for it. The boots ain't made you for it. You ain't been near a cow since your pa ran you off the farm in Texas. Oh, yeah? How about that herd we wrestled north of Waco? Four steers ain't a herd. And a steer 
Ain't a cow. Well, they look like cows. <laughs> Can't tell a steer from a cow. That's dumb. Dumb, huh? Then how come I'm the boss? You ain't the boss. I am. I ain't. I am right behind Bodine. Well, maybe you are, and maybe you ain't. But you're walking just like I am. Not much longer, partner. I got me a plan, and I'm going to tell you about it. Well, you tell it to your cows. Bodine, where are we headed? Well, because of Reno's trigger finger, we got to go all the way to Tucson. And you know how I feel about that town. What's wrong with Tucson? Oh, there's some mighty pretty. Tucson. I get recognized there's people who'd see me hang. Oh. Huh? Hang? You? <laughs> what for? Well, two years ago, on New Year's Eve, me and the local sheriff had a little disagreement about me being in the bank after closing time. Truth of the matter is, I left the sheriff laying dead right there in the main street. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me you shot somebody from the front? <laughs> Had my picture on every post and tree in the county. Huh. Well, that was two years ago. People done forgot by now. Well, I ain't taking no chances. Where are we going? Boys, we are going to church. Huh. Well, I dang sure ain't walking to Tucson, and I dang sure ain't walking to no church. Oh, you'll do it if Bodine says do it. Well, maybe so, but look, I, I got me a plan because I don't walk here. Let me show you what you're going to get. Just well, get over here. Uh, what, what are you doing? Uh, Reno, re get stuck. Reno, don't make me do this. Reno, don't make me do this. Oh, Reno. Bodine! I'm not brother to Tucson. Reno! You got a good horse there. You got the gold in your saddlebags. All you have to do is follow that trail. You just keep heading south. Keep that river on your right. You'll be in Tucson this time tomorrow. I want to thank both of you. That would have been the end of me if you hadn't helped. Thanks again. Well, you got a strong horse. It'll carry you all the way down into the Santa Cruz Valley. Good luck. Those are very bad Indians who kill and steal horses. But they're good Indians and bad Indians. Good white man, bad white man. Bad white man who shoot me. He's the only good Mexican is dead Mexican. <laughs> then you come along, you take bullet from my back. Otherwise, I'd be very good Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so happy Mr. Carson got down to Tucson, and it's all over now. It may not be over with yet. Mr. Carson says in this letter that he has heard that someone has been around Tucson, and the word is he's looking to hire some guns. Once a man like Bodine gets a scent of gold, it's like an old blue tick hound a tree in a mountain line. <laughs> Men like Bodine, they don't dig for gold. They let the others use the pick and pan. And they take the gold the easy way. That easy way can get a fellow killed. Bodine's been lucky so far. in such a big hurry. Headed down to Tucson. Something about raising money for the mission. Hmm. Don't them priests usually wear sandals? Mostly, yes. Why? Oh, 
There's the stalk. Adams, we better be heading down to Sunway and see if that is that Bodine fella. Uh, you, you know, the next day he's not come by for two days now. Why don't you stay, rest, eat? Uh, Maria's a good cook. I don't think we can wait, Carlos. Besides, they won't sell a ticket to Martha anyway. I <laughs> see. <laughs> Tucson's not too far away. I think we'll make it on foot all right. All we have to do is fill our canteens, and I still have a pack of jerky. We're kind of in a hurry now, but we'd like to come back and visit y'all sometime. Uh, but you know, the stage must go clear around the mountain to go to Tucson. I know deer trail make walk much shorter. You'll find it by Big Boulder. There will be full moon tonight, trail easy to follow. We should take Serapis we have to Tucson. Maybe tomorrow, we might see Mr. Trapper and Mr. Adams. See, we go to Tucson tomorrow. We sell Serapis, make money, buy food, come back to Mission. If you got some of them Serapis ready now, Mr. Carlos, Martha would be glad to carry them to Tucson for you. Uh -huh. you. Gracias. But we take Serapis uh, tomorrow. You know, I was scout for Army once. I follow tracks. Our tracks? No. Railroad tracks. Santa Fe train now go all the way to Tucson. I think we'll make it to Tucson all right, by trail <laughs> or by tracks. <laughs> Later that afternoon, Grizzly, Trapper, and Martha, with their canteens full, said their goodbyes to their old friends and took the trail south over the mountains, down into the valley to the old town of Tucson. Grizzly and Trapper had a friend who ran the school in Tucson, so they stopped by so Martha could entertain the kids. Boy, those youngins took a holiday from school every time Martha showed up. They thoroughly enjoyed themselves. I kind of think Martha had a good time, too. Good of you to come in such short notice. We're hanging Kid Jody at sunrise, and uh, he's sure hankering to have a priest hear his confession. Confession? <clears throat> oh, well, if Kid Jody's going to hang, then uh, he's already been found guilty, so I don't see where hearing his confession now is going to matter one way or another. He claims he could die happy if he could just talk to a priest. Uh, Friar, you stay here with me. Brother Jake, would you go down to the livery stable and see if they'll donate three fast horses to the mission? Uh, Sheriff, <clears throat> just what is it this uh, kid Jody did to deserve hanging? Shot the town sheriff and left him for dead on the street. It was uh, New Year's Eve when the shooting happened. There, but for the grace of God, go I. We got Jody uh, in the stockade out back. We can argue this over and over again, but it won't make any difference. I know that I'm right. Oh, there's a padre. Padre. We'll ask him. Padre. Padre. What do you want? My Bible study group. 
truth is in the scriptures is having a problem that we think you can help us with. Now, all of the stories, the wild stories about Adam and Eve, Jonah and the whale, and Noah and the ark, well, are they true or not? Oh, Ma'am, I, I can't help you much. Uh, I never rode with any of them. Folks. Well, are they lies or not? Well, it may be and they may not be. Uh, you know how people talk. I, I guess I just have to come out and say it. Jonah and the whale and all those stories and then Adam and Eve, they say they have navels. Ma'am, navels? I wouldn't take nobody's word about something so personal. If I was you, I'd just go take a look at them folks and, and then you'll know for sure. I, uh, uh. It's not that we don't wish to pay or that your price is too high. We're just short of funds right now. You know, with all that wine and the price of candles, oh my Lord, the price of candles, they've doubled in the last year. We'll have the money tonight. We're in town to pick up a big collection today. You pass the plate, Padre, then come back for your horses. <laughs> sir, sir, there must be something we can work out. It's, it's for the church, the mission. Please. Hey, Padre. <clears throat> come to town to see the hanging? Well, we certainly hadn't planned it that way. But uh, now that we're here, I'm so sorry to get the news that you've lost two sheriffs in only one year. We didn't lose two sheriffs. Oh? You must be thinking about Sheriff Parker. Yeah. Some sidewinder tried to shoot him in the back, only winged him in the arm. Only uh, winged him, you say? Enough to make him give up sheriffing. Hmm. Hey, Parker. Bless you, my son. Only winged him, huh? You <laughs> I got you, you dirty. Hey, kid. Kid, come here. Okay, uh, you got any wine? Uh, no. But listen to me. Now, I know you didn't kill the sheriff, but I also know who did. Now, New Year's Eve, two years ago, the sheriff. No, 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 no. It was last New Year's Eve when I emptied my six shooter and the sheriff flackers and he fell dead in the street in a big pile of horse droppings. I did it. A year ago? A year ago. On New Year's Eve. Watkins. Watkins. Sure, Watkins. Rotten guy. Uh, bless you, my son. Well, Padre, thank you, Padre. I feel better already. These are horses. Odin, the man won't let us have any unless we show him some ready cash. We come out of that bank, we ain't gonna have time to go rent no horses. Them horses. Have them ready to ride when we come out with the cash. We going into the bank dressed in these? You bet. They ain't gonna expect priests to hold up no bank. Well, what if the gold is in the safe? What then? I've got four sticks of dynamite. We'll blow that tin box wide open. This time, Bodine, you better be right. I know I'm right. You can bet your life on it. We, we are, are Bodine. Bodine. We, we are. are. Well, I told you once we got rid of that Grizzly Adams, the going was going to be easy. You two stay here. I'm going to go in the bank and eyeball it. Mm, sure. You're just going to mosey in and look around. No. Bonehead. I'm not going to just mosey in and look around. I'm going to trick that banker into showing me exactly where that gold is. And that is why I'm the boss, 
and you're nothing. Hmm. Big deal, boss over nothing. <laughs> Will you sign this, please? Certainly. Thank you, sir. Can I help you, Father? Uh, yes, my child. I'm from the Santa Cruz Mission, and we're looking for a safe place to keep our money, and we were told this just might be the place to keep it, so it's safe. This bank is trusted with a great deal of money. Mm-hmm. Any, uh, gold? Yes, we have the most modern safe between Denver and San Francisco. You don't say. How very interesting, and, uh, you're the only one with the combination. Our bank manager, Mr. Carson, is the only one with that information. He has it committed to memory. So, your money will be perfectly safe. Well, thank you very much, miss. Uh, I'll go get the money and be right back. Thanks for your help. We close at four. Oh, we'll be back before four. Thanks again. Well, let's get at it. No, 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 not yet. We go into that bank at exactly five minutes to four. Now, who's got a watch? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, near forgot. Lifted this off that doctor we held up outside of Santa Fe. Remember, you had the gun on him, see? And we I don't need a history lesson. Now, you know how to use that thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, see? When that, when that long hand is straight up and that little bitty short one is right there, it's four o'clock. What time is it? Hmm? What time is it? Oh, it's uh, uh, five minutes after three. All right, so you keep an eye on that watch. And when that long hand is near straight up, you give us the word, and we're going in that bank and make a deposit with bags of sand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Martha, it's good to see you. How's the girl? No need to be afraid, Carla. She's a friend. She helped save my life. Mr. Adams, I'm so happy and relieved you could come. Being in a strange town, not knowing anybody, not knowing who I could trust. This is my assistant, Carla Townley, Mr. Adams, Martha, and this gentleman is Trapper. Ma'am? Mr. Carson, Adams tells me you're expecting big trouble. I'm not sure yet. There's a man called Bodine that tried to rob the gold shipment, even took a shot at me. Mr. Adams hadn't been there. Well, the gold would be gone, and I'd probably be dead. You think this Bodine fella's still trailing that gold, huh? Well, the sheriff said there was a man in town trying to hire some gunmen. Might be Bodine, it might not. Well, let's play it like it is Bodine, until the sheriff turns up something new. We keep gold and most of the cash in the safe, and the safe is kept locked all the time. All the time? Most of the time. We open it up in the morning to put cash in the drawers. Then we don't open it again until night when we close. Oh, we'll have to open it in a little while. Oh. The priests from the Santa Cruz Mission are bringing in their money. Uh. They should be back any time now. And priests from the mission, they say they got money to put in your bank. That's what the priest said. You mean this priest was in here? Yes. I told him we close at four. Well, I'll leave Martha here with you. Trapper and I will go see if we can turn something up. Martha, you stay here and stay out of the way. looks deserted today. We not sell many zarapas. Ah, poor Maria. You're gonna have to carry them all the way back to the mission. Ah. Trapper stayed at the school to play some music and games with the children, while Grizzly went to check out what the Bodine gang might be up to. They weren't the smartest gang to ever ride the West, 
The grizzly wanted to keep track of them anyway. <laughs> Martha, don't you be a laughing at me now. All right, what time is it? Uh, five past three. Good. Five past three, you blockhead. That's what you said when I come out of the bank. <laughs> I forgot to wind it. How would I shoot you where you stand? Well, there's got to be a clock in this town somewhere. Find it. Come on. Serapis, serapis baratas. Compra la serapis. Serapis muy baratas. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Padre. Do you happen to know the time? I am sorry, Father. I do not have a watch. But my uncle, he can tell you the time. Would you please? Oh, see, si, see. Si. It is exactly five minutes before four. Give or take 30 seconds. Thank you, and bless you, my child. Father, bye con Dios. That man is no padre. He is one who shoot me in back. Are you sure? Si. I get a gun, and I will kill him. No, 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 Maria. Maria! No. Maria! No, no! See them horses? I don't want you to let nobody near them horses. Nobody, you got that? Have them outside the bank and ready to ride when we come out. Got it? Right, Bodine. All right, Reno, I want you to come with me. Maria, what's wrong? The gun, give me the gun. My gun? Yes, the man who shot my uncle. He's getting away, dressed as a priest. They're going up the street now. Quick, Trapper, give me the gun. come on. No. My sons, surely you're not leaving yet. The day is young. The sun's high. The sons, the horses are tired. Please, please. The widow McGillicuddy passed away. She left a big request to the mission. Please drink some of us. Still there. Padre, we'll talk your swell someplace else. Let's ride, boys! Please, my sons, a few minutes, please. <laughs> oh, oh, they don't kill me. So you made it, just in time. We were about to close. Well, here it is. There's no need to count it. Just put it in the safe here, and uh, we'll be on our way. I'm sorry, Father. We must count your money so we can give you a deposit for the correct amount. There's no need for that, really. Just keep the bag uh, tied. We trust you. I'm sorry. Bank rules say that we have to. We're playing by my rules now, lady. Mr. Banker, you bring your memory over to the safe and open it now. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Now, you get out here and open this safe now. I'll tell I you can't do that. That money's been entrusted to this bank, and I cannot open the vault. I never hit me no banker. Of all the dumb, boneheaded tricks I've ever seen in my life, he's the only one that knows the combination to the safe. Well, you, you didn't. Now I've got to open the thing with dynamite. Here, you know what to do. Lady, we're gonna be outside keeping watch. Get out. Move, 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 move. Be careful. Hurry, get out. Don't get excited. Act natural, be calm, and don't scream. Here we come. Ha <laughs> ha! 
hit you. Probably in the bank now. Let's go in the back door. Hurry! What are you? What are you? What? Hurry up in there, Reno! What's sticking that bone here so long? Drop that gun. Don't do it, lady. I'll kill her and then I'll kill you. You're the man that shot my uncle in the back, and I'm going to kill you. Now drop that gun. Now. You're going to dynamite the safe, and Mr. Carson is in there. Oh, Adam! Adam, help me! Get me out of here! I'm going to be blown to bits! I'm going to be blown to bits! I'm going to be blown to bits! Martha, Martha. Maria, you must believe God's will. Do not kill. Not the priest who say, shoot him in the eye. This is God's country. We use God's law. Found this priest trying to seal a horse in the, in the livery. Can you believe that? This man tried to rob this bank. And you two stopped him? We had some help. My friend Martha helped. I'm sure, Sheriff, you have plenty of room in your cell to put him away for good. I can arrange it. Let's go. Come on, Martha. Come on, Martha. Senorita Martha, friend, good friend. Hey, I teach her that. <laughs> you not head. Your brains is fitting a thimble, and I can still get my thumb in it. Let me tell you something. Another five minutes, I'd have had that bear eating out of my uh, hand. Yeah, you did. Yeah. You wouldn't have had a hand for him to eat out of, you idiot. Oh, you know, you know, this time, Codeine, you better be right. <laughs> I am this time. You can bet your life on it. That's what he said, wasn't it? <laughs> you know what he said? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well, everybody has a slip up now, man. Far above the fields and the running river bed. Just take a breath and feel it flowing through your head. This is God's country. It's heaven's narrow. I want to spend my day right here. Narrow Your every sound. This is God's country. It's heaven's mirror. I want to spend my days right. The sunlight every morning. The stars smile on us every night. Winds keep changing without
lead to higher ground. No cap giants echo your every sound. This is God's country. It's heaven's road. I 